Good evening, we bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo De Rosario. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Diego Dario. In tonight's game plan, Mr. President Gabe Norwood joins us to give his hottest takes on the NBA Finals. Can Giannis lead his team to a championship? And where does Chris Paul rank in the top point guards of all time? Ooh. Ooh. Then we've got an NBA Finals exclusive with the one and the only Phoenix Suns guard, Cam Payne, Cameron Payne, fresh from their Game 1 victory as he shares his incredible journey from the G League to the NBA Finals. And we'll check in with UFC heavyweight contender Greg Hardy as he faces Tai Tuivasa in UFC 264. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. The Phoenix Suns came out scorching hot as they took Game 1 of the NBA Finals. But, Bucks fans, fear not for Game 2. Is just hours away. Catch the action live 9 a.m. Manila time on NBA TV Philippines and TV5. Giannis and the Bucks will look to tie things up and steal home court advantage against Chris Paul and the scorching hot Phoenix Suns. As we approach game two of the finals tonight, we are joined by NBA.com Philippines All Star Analyst. That's right, he's an All Star, Mr. President, the Honorable. Gabe Norwood. Gabe, how are you doing? All-star Hooper, too. <laughs> right, Gabe, I think you're on mute. Sorry, man. Sorry, Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. That wasn't an all-star move. I guess I got to pick my game up. But no, 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 no. no. Maybe I'm to be here tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was a rookie mistake right there. But, uh, sure. Gabe, before we move on to the NBA, I just want to ask, how are you? How's practice going? I know the PBA is uh, slowly starting to ramp up. We're getting closer, closer tip-off. How are you? How's the team doing? Uh, just really excited. Really excited to start hearing some good news and, and some signs of, you know, some life in terms of the PBA. Team's working hard. We're getting ready, uh, making the most of our, our time and practices. So we're, we're looking forward to a good season. All right. So on that note, Gabe, uh, you know, it's so, it's so special every time you're here. So we got something special here for you because we're going to play a little game that's inspired by you. It's called Mr. President Declares. Why is Queer Keep called Mr. President? He, he just is. Look at him. Look at him. There, Mr. President Declares. That, that's a much better graphic than what we use for Jago. Oh, my goodness. All right, so this will be simple. Very simple. Jago and I will give right. Gabe some fill-in-the-blank statements about the NBA Finals, and he shall give us his answers accordingly. Hot takes. Hot takes. Only straight from the president. So, Jago, take us away. So, for your first declaration, mm. Mr. President declares Chris Paul is a top blank point guard of all time. Ah. Oh. Chris Paul is a top, I'll say top five point top guard of all time. Five. How about when he wins top the championship? Five. But if he, when wins. he wins, if he wins, he, he might slide up a couple of spots. But I, I think he's safe, you know, top five in assists, top five in steals as of today uh, for his career. But all, all he needs is that, that title, you know, you got Magic, Isaiah Thomas, you know, two time MVP, Steve Nash, though he never won one. Yeah. Stockton, Bob Cousy, you got. You know, if you want to put Allen Iverson in that mix as point guard. So I think he needs to get a, a title to secure it. But right now, he, I think he's, he's safe in the top five. The point guard. Wow. You know what? I, I would actually fight Gabe here. Uh, I would fight Gabe here because I think top five is premature. Only because of the names you mentioned. You have Magic. You yeah. have Isaiah. You have uh, Stockton. You have Kidd. You have Nash. That's already five. And put him over any of those five at the moment before a title. At it's so difficult. Today, yeah, I, I, it, it's tough, but I just think overall body of work, you know, outside of outside of basketball too, the importance, you know, being the the player rep and everything, the title that he's had, I, I think I, I put I put Chris Paul up there in the top five. All right, you know, I'm I'm about, I'm about to go on a coup d'état here, but uh, against the president, yeah, against the president, but Jags. Let's go to the next one. Second declaration from the president: Giannis Antetokounmpo will hmm. win how many championships in his career? Ah, Ooh, man. He's just 26. That's a tough one. Yeah. That, that's a tough declaration, but as Ooh. of today, he, he doesn't have any, and I don't know, man. I, I think he might get one uh, really? somewhere in the future, but I don't know. It's, it's going to be tough to get it this year. Uh, you, you'll get one sometime, but I, I don't know if this is their year. 
Wow, so just one. So I, I'm assuming you don't feel that he is that that star piece that could just take a team to a championship, you know, not not far away from the level of a LeBron or a Steph Curry back in their prime. Uh, I don't think it's any knock on Giannis, to be honest. I, I think, you know, winning stuff, you know, Diego, you can speak on it yourself. Like winning is not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of luck involved. It takes uh, a lot. Things like that. You know, yeah. they got past Brooklyn this year, but <laughs> got past Brooklyn this year, but um, you know, Brooklyn's going to revamp. Stuff, Atlanta, Atlanta is on the move and, and looking dangerous. And you still have Philadelphia that's going to rebuild and Boston and, and these teams. Miami's always dangerous. So, you know, it, it's a tough way to, to win there in the East, but. Uh, it's definitely not a knock on Giannis. Giannis is going to do his thing. This, right. ne this next one is an interesting one. Yeah. Blank is the most important co star in the Suns versus Bucks finals. Who's he going to be? Oh, game? man. Yeah, you know, I, I think the, the question basically, the, the declaration is to move away from the stars, the, the obvious, but I'll say Mikel Bridges. Uh, I think the things that he's able to do okay. on both ends of the court, um, you know, Jay Crowder struggled in game one. But at the end of the day, you know what he's going to give you uh, on a consistent basis. But I think Mikel Bridges, his activity, you know, back cuts and knocking down open shots, but also, you know, his versatility defensively, you know, from going from Giannis to Drew to Chris Middleton. Um, I, I think he's a very, very valuable piece for, for the Suns to go move, to move forward in the series. DeAndre Ayton, Drew Holiday, their fans are shaking right now, uh, Gabe. <laughs> Uh, they, they're they're very upset, but I, I find that very interesting that you pick Michael Bridges because do you feel that it would be up to those maybe those four or five guys uh, in the lineup to that will actually make the difference in the end? Do you feel like the top three of both these teams cancel each other out? In a way, you know, I, I think you know you look at Drew, Chris Middleton, Giannis. You look at Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton. Um, they've all been pretty steady through the series. You know, Devin Booker hasn't even particularly shot the ball well, but. Mm -hmm. Just his presence on the court, but I, I think you look at the the Mikel Bridges, the the Cam Johnson, the PJ Tuckers, and you know um, uh, Connaughton for for the Bucks. Those, those type of players, if they can get hot, you know, one or two games, that, that could steal a win and, and change the momentum. So, you know, I try to move away from the top three on, on both teams on that one. A lot of mm -hmm. crucial players in this series. So for the next one, yeah. Mr. President declares. Blank is the best <laughs> part of the Suns versus Bucks final series. It's kind of easy for you, Kuya Gabe. <laughs> I mean, Blank is the best. Not not the Suns and Four guy. Not, not oh, yeah, you know, know, I was gonna say <laughs> it's it's either the Suns and Four guy or the entire <laughs> exactly. arena counting down to ten, counting up to ten right. rather. Uh, no, just the I guess uh, it's broad, but I'll just say storyline, man. Yeah, you, you got. Uh, history is going to be made this year uh, in terms of Milwaukee not winning since, what, the 70s and Phoenix never winning. So uh, I think history is the best part of this uh, Suns and Bucks final series. Uh, but you, Jags, what, what's your pick here? Uh, what's most memorable for you? For me, it's just the matchups. The matchups. Great matchups, okay. like okay. big three versus yeah. big three. Okay. For the next one, Kuya Gabe, Mr. Boring Pre boring answer. Mr. President <laughs> declares Blank will win the series in how many games? Oof. Man, I, I gotta stick to my guns. You know, my my kids, they have their own predictions. We have a little little guest going on in the house, but I have the, the Phoenix Suns winning in in six. I, I have them going in six. I think you know Milwaukee might be able to steal one, maybe steal game two, but you know I, I think Phoenix has just been a well-oiled machine here in the playoffs. You know, like I said, Devin Booker hasn't shot all that great. They missed Chris Paul in some games, and you know DeAndre Ayton's probably been the most consistent. Um, you know, just in terms of availability and, and, and play. So I think they're they're ready and they're hungry, and, and I think Phoenix is going to take care of it. Sorry, just really quickly, Gabe, and I'm really curious. Has anyone in your household picked the Bucks? Uh, Izzy. Izzy, my, my three-year-old <laughs> three has the Bucks. All um, right, so it's either he's the smartest it. one or he has a lot to learn. <laughs> hey, something's about to, we're going to figure it out here soon. All, All right. right, now that you picked the Suns, next declaration is... Blank will be the 2021 NBA Finals MVP. So who's it going to be from the Suns? Uh, well, as much as I'd love to say Chris Paul, I really think Devin mm. Booker will be the really? 2021 okay. NBA Finals MVP. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he hasn't shot particularly well, but you, we all know the type of player he is, the type of scorer that he is. Um, and he's even picked it up on the defensive end, taking on challenges. But I think it's just a matter of time till he gets hot. 
maybe goes off for a, a fifty, you know, a fifty point game. I see that coming too. Yeah, it, right. it's, it's, I feel like it's bound to happen. So I'll, I'll go with Devin Booker. I don't know, man. I, I'm actually picking eighth in this case. How about Ooh. you, Jax? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for that. the point guard. He's been that. playing. So you He's got Chris great. Paul from Jago. I got eighth, and, and you got uh, Devin Booker. Let's just see. Let's just see. You know, <laughs> you know. But if the Bucks win it all, we're all dumb. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So basically. <laughs> For the last one, Mr. President declares this NBA season will be most memorable for blank. Hmm. Unfortunately, it might be injuries. Yeah. It, it might be yeah, injuries. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. you, you look at this playoff run, it's been well documented. So, you know, from the East and, and Western conferences, injuries kind of took its toll on teams and, you know, changed a lot of people's predictions in terms of the final. You know, that's really interesting. Uh, the injuries will, uh, all of us know, uh, how badly it aff affected the NBA. But I think we can all agree that even though the injuries were there, this is not an asterisk uh, finals for either oh, team. Absolutely not. All part of the game. Yeah, absolutely. So that's something yeah. that we can all declare together. I don't know what we can call that, <laughs> but th that is what it is. So that wraps up Mr. President Declares, but Gabe Nor will, will still join us here for a while and we have some news regarding the Olympics. Meanwhile, updates now on our national athletes. With almost two weeks left for the 2020 Olympics, the Philippine Olympic Committee has announced that pole vaulter EJ Obiena and judoka Kiyomi Watanabe will be the country's flag bearers at the opening ceremony in Tokyo, Japan. Along with that, Tolentino also announced that the 2021 Southeast Asian Games will not push through this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The SEA Games was originally scheduled to be held in Vietnam in November, and we will give you more updates as information becomes available. Now, after the break, we chat with Phoenix Suns guard Cameron Payne in a special NBA Finals exclusive where he shares his epic journey from the G League to the NBA Finals. Stay tuned, you're watching the game. Welcome back to the game alongside Paulo Del Rosario, I'm Diego Dario. As the NBA final series unfolds, it's clear that not every player's journey to the biggest stage in basketball is the same. For 2015 14th overall draft pick Cameron Payne, his path to the NBA finals was anything but easy. After bouncing from teams to the G League and stints in China, he is now on the brink of redemption in the form of an NBA title. Our correspondent Carlo Pamintuan caught up with the Suns guard in this latest edition of Inside the Game. Cameron, we all know that the Phoenix Suns started making noise inside the NBA bubble, which was the time when you debuted with them. After playing for Oklahoma City, Chicago, and Cleveland, was there an immediate feeling that you were building something special with the Suns? Uh, no, nah, not really. Uh, honestly, I, it was just uh, trying to play as good as I can to get another job uh, for them to pick me up, pick up my team option. Um, and, and that was really about it. Uh, I just wanted to come out there and play hard and just try to stick in the, stick in the league. <laughs> Can you talk to us about how that felt to be able to get back in the NBA after a stint in the G League and of course you also played in China. What did that opportunity mean to you? And it felt good. Um, it really did. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I had so many questions. I had a lot of doubts uh, just from what I've been through. <clears throat> so um, I was just always on my toes. I couldn't really just relax. I still haven't got the opportunity to just relax, sit back and just say, all right, I'm back in uh, and I can, you know, kind of be comfortable. Um, that, that wasn't the case uh, when I when I when I got 
the opportunity to get back, it was just all about sticking. Um, and when I am this season, it was all about, man, play the whole season. I haven't played a full season my whole career. So my job was to play a full season and just try to stick as the backup point guard because I knew those were the questions uh, coming in to the season for the Suns. Who was the backup point guard? Are we going to have one? Are we going to have to go to the trade, trade that line and get one? So it was a lot of things going on in my mind. So I never really got comfortable. It's still just been a fight uphill. And uh, I, I feel like it will forever be a fight uphill. And I just try to keep my dog mentality and uh, translate that to the court every night. Cameron, throughout the season, you've convinced, you know, a lot of doubters that you are here to stay in the NBA. We all know that there was a quote from a Chicago official that they didn't think you were NBA level early with your stint there. How do you deal with, with noise like that? Do you even mind it or do you use it to inspire it perhaps to push you to work harder? At first, um, it was just kind of a shock. Like, man, why, 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 why they telling me I ain't this, I ain't that? And especially the people that that brought me into the organization. Uh, so it was just kind of crazy to hear those things. But now I use that as fuel. Like tomorrow we play, the, we play tomorrow. All those things go through my head every every time. And then you see all these people uh, come back and you know say, man, Cam's really good. Cam, I, honestly, I've been the same player. So it's just kind of mess with my head a little bit, but I go out there and use it as fuel on the court. It gives me my energy. It gives me my edge because uh, I just love proving people wrong. And it's been happening to me all my life. So it's not the first time. It's just the biggest stage. It just was seen on the biggest stage. Uh, so, I mean, I, I appreciate it. Uh, it. It made me the dog I am. And uh, I'm just going to keep using that and play, play with that chip on my shoulder every night. Upon the arrival of Chris Paul, um, did it immediately change because you knew that Chris Paul was was looking to go all the way? It was something. It was the only thing missing from from his Hall of Fame career. Did, did you feel that from day one when he was with the team? Getting him, it was a blessing for me as well. I get to learn all these different things of uh, being a point guard uh, from a Hall of Famer, a future Hall of Famer. It's just a blessing in disguise. But um, when he got here, it was just all about man. Let's just try to. Let's just win a championship. That's our number one goal. That's what we come here every every day to put our shoes on to do. We're trying to win that Larry O'Brien trophy. So uh, when we got C, it was just like, all right, let's add that to the pillar and let's keep getting better, uh, especially coming from the bubble. We had a pretty good core. Um, and adding C, I felt like it just kind of put the icing on the cake for our team. Finally, Cameron, you were one year old when the Phoenix Suns last made it to the NBA Finals. I mean, they have had... Some great teams in the past, including the squads of Steve Nash, of course, when he was MVP. But can you describe just what it means to the city and the fans of the Phoenix Suns for you to be able to make it into the NBA Finals? I mean, it means a lot. Um, I know, actually, from hearing an interview from Book, uh, that this is huge for the city. We, we like the baby of the city. Uh, you know, when, when, when we're doing well, the city's booming, you know. And uh, it's just, it's, it's been crazy to see because we went from no fans to a little fans to a lot of fans to a whole lot of fans. And you can just see their enthusiasm at the game, man. This feels like, man, we never had COVID. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they're, they're just as rowdy as us. They're locked in. And, and it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to be in this situation knowing the last time they've been here was 1993. So um, it's just our job to keep, man, keep these fans happy. Um, and just try our best to come out on top of this one. When we return, we'll check in with UFC heavyweight contender Greg Hardy as he faces Tai Tui Vasa in UFC 264. Stay tuned, you're watching the game. Welcome back to the game. I'm Paolo De Rosario alongside Diego Dario. 
Meanwhile, the UFC 264 is happening in Las Vegas. Mixed martial arts fans can't wait to feel the intensity of the UFC once again. Heavyweight contender Greg Hardy is ready to go all out in another heart-stopping match against Tai Tuivasa on Sunday. Let's hear what the Prince of War has to say about his upcoming match as he sits down with our correspondent, Carlo Pominduan. We are now joined by UFC heavyweight contender Greg, the Prince of War, Hardy. Greg, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you for having me, brother. What's up? Greg, your last three fights have all been behind closed doors. So just how excited are you to be fighting in front of UFC fans once again for UFC 264? It's going to be cool, man. Uh, it's been, a, it's been a, a long time since we've been out there in front of the crowds, felt that pulse, felt those uh, cheers and booze and everything, man. It's, it's an electrifying feeling. I'm kind of happy to have it back. Would you say that there is added pressure to perform well because there will be more people watching this fight card? Uh, no, not really. I haven't really been on a low profile card since I started fighting. <laughs> They've all been pretty high profile. So it's, it's a walk in the park for me, man. It's just losing this weight and getting it done, enjoying the moment. Were there any changes you made with your preparation or areas that you really wanted to focus on? Not really, you know, um, I, took the, I took the time to uh, focus on my conditioning a little bit more. It was already good. A lot of the, a lot of the lag from last fight came from the weight cut. We spent a lot of time getting nutritionists and kind of cutting down as much weight as we can naturally so that we can cut less, feel, feel less of the uh, shock from, from cutting 25 pounds and go out there with uh, a boat of energy, man, and continue on, you know, with that first round that I started with uh, Marcy. Greg, related to that, how quickly did you get back into training after your last fight? Oh, immediately. I, uh, I think I took like uh, three weeks to recover. I had a, a foot injury from kicking, a little swelling that I, I couldn't walk for a, like a week and then took a week to hang out with my family and a week to travel when I was back to work. So, of course, you'd be fighting uh, Tai Tuivasa, a known striker. Can you let us in on the preparations that you've had, specifically, you know, with him in mind? Uh, the cool thing about, you know, going with a striker is it's my style. So this camp, we really got to go back to working on what I like to work on, punching people in the face, breaking people's jaws, movement being a boxer, being a kickboxer, and um, attacking, you know, and, instead of playing the less not get taken down game. In your own assessment, how far have you improved since your professional MMA debut back in 2018? Well, first of all, I know the rules now. I know you can't meet people in the face. <laughs> second of all, <laughs> second of all, um, I think it's dramatically, man. You know, um, that's kind of my signature move, coming back 100 times better than I was before, you know, advancing rapidly so much so much so that you know it's uncanny and a lot of people really don't understand it don't know where it comes from and that, you know that's my style go back to the lab get back to work i'm almost i'm almost in camp 90 percent of the year always learning figure, closing the gap you know because i just started three years ago so there's not there's a lot that i don't know can you just share us share with us uh, the thought process behind you know Picking MMA as the next stage of your athletic career because it rather well, came out of the blue, of course. It was a surprise for many people. <laughs> but what was it about MMA? Um, did you always want want an opportunity to fight? I wanted to be a fighter, and the reason I always wanted to be a fighter was because I like to compete. In. And I've always looked at MMA and boxing as the ultimate competition sport, the ultimate gladiator sport, the man's man sport. And as an athlete, man, that's kind of like the holy grail for one such as myself, you know, they got to the top, made it through all, what, 20 years of booby traps to where I was supposed to fail and then make it to the NFL and get to the top of that. And I'm just like, well, what's the next highest level you can go to the competition? And immediately it was MMA, man. Those are savages. So how tough was it starting training at, at that stage of your career? Did you get like beat up a lot early when, when, you, when you started training with, with the top MMA oh, fighters? Man, a lot. <laughs> I spent I spent the first year throwing up, having asthma attacks, bleeding out of my face, <laughs> getting kicked in the stomach. It was a lot of ice, <laughs> a, lot of physical, a lot of physical pain. But you know, you just got to keep your head down. You know, um, even in football, man, I, I played four positions. Uh, I played on 
special teams, even when I was a pro bowler. I, um, I was always, you know, working on my mind, working on understanding the sport, working on developing. And those skills just carry over so well. You know, I was always that guy. And if I, you know, leave the late, and that's exactly what I needed to kind of close the gap in the day. That's that's what, all you really need to start is a handful of, you know, those things down there, and <laughs> and a, a few missing brain cells, man. And uh, I just walked in. That was our correspondent, Carlo Pamintuan, with, in, with, for Inside the Game with UFC heavyweight contender, Greg Hardy. You know, it's, it's interesting that uh, that shift from football to MMA, uh, you know, changing your mentality from one sport to the other. I don't know if you experienced that. Were you a volleyball player before? Did you basketball? Or? I, I would just try a, a different sports, but I'm sure it's going to be different when you really focus on that sport. So. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's different yeah, it's movements, crazy. right? It's, it's crazy, you know. Movements. Yeah, uh, speaking of uh, what, you know, what happened uh, around the show and uh, we talked a lot about the Suns and the box. And um, look, I'm thinking back at it, maybe we were be a bit biased to the Suns in general because of what they did in Game 1. But if you're a box fan, there's still a lot of hope. A lot of hope. Basically, because we thought Giannis Antetokounmpo was, wasn't going to be 100%, but I think he still got a double-double. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a good sign for the box. I'm sure in the next games, he's going to be a little bit better uh, when it comes to that knee. So that's a good sign for the Bucks. And I'm sure Drew Holiday will, will play back. better. Yeah. Well, he had 20 and 17 talking about uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And you just saw there the schedule for the next game on Game 2. You can catch that on NBA TV Philippines and on TV5. Thank you very much for joining us. Jago, take us away. Thank you for joining us. I'm Diego Dario. Catch us weeknights here on One News, One Sports, and One Sports Plus. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. This has been The Game.